Hello, in this video, we will discuss about the vasodilation as well and vasoconstriction mechanism. And we will understand a little bit about the sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation. So let's start here. So first of all, we should need to understand the blood vessel and what is the function because the vasoconstriction and vasodilation will be occur in the blood vessel in the blood circulatory system for the regulation of blood pressure. So for example, this is the heart contain aortic arch and descending aorta and superior and inferior vena cava. Let's begin to understand with the uh, layer of uh, blood vessel. So first of all, we should need to understand the layer of blood vessel and then we will understand about the vasoconstriction. So this is the outermost layer is a fibrous collagen tissue while the innermost is the endothelial layer which contain endothelial cell and elastic tissue are present which that is surrounded by the endothelial layer and smooth muscle cell is the outermost which that is used for the vasoconstriction and vasodilation when the ligand will bind with the endothelial inside of the blood circulatory system will stimulate the smooth smooth muscles also the digestive tract so let's begin to understand with the sympathetic and parasympathetic stimulation. So first of all here is we will understand with the vasoconstriction. So this is the adrenergic neuron which that is stimulate the epinephrine and norepinephrine by the exocytosis. And this is the neurotransmitter. And after this here is a stimulus, stimulus external stimulus can be or internal st stimulus which that will be. Uh, first stimulate the higher brain cortex to stimulate the nerve impulse so this is the pituitary gland this is the part of endocrine hormone endocrinology so in this way the adenohypophysis will excrete the ACTH but here is the neurotransmitter first bind with the neuroepinephrine and norepinephrine receptor so the epinephrine when bind the vasoactivation will be occur the vasoconstriction will be occur in this way the blood pressure will be increased due to the sympathetic activity for example fight and flow, flight response but the norepinephrine will bind and will vasodilation so the cortisol hormone also released from the adrenal gland when stimulated from hypothalamus and neuroscretory cell which that secrete the adrenocorticotropic releasing factor will release the adrenocorticotropic hormone this will bind with the adrenocorticotropic hormone receptor also from adrenal gland late stimulation this is the late stimulation after the continuously stimulus for the paras for the sympathetic nervous system will lead to increase the epinephrine and norepinephrine after the nerve stimulation the adrenergic neuron so in this way the autonomic nervous system uh, autonomic nervous system made up of sympathetic nervous system and parasympathetic nervous system sympathetic nervous system is used for the vasoconstriction and fight or flight response in this way the blood circulatory system will be more pressure due to the vasoconstriction while the parasympathetic nervous system is the vasodilation in this way the blood pressure will be decreased and rest and digest will be activated so let's draw here is again the endothelial layer as well as smooth muscle cells let's here is the endothelial cell this endothelial cell is directly contact with the blood and in this way the glucose can be entered without insulin so that is why it is endothelial cell which that will be independent to insulin for the metabolism and glucose influx so this is the rbc or moving into the endothelial cell so let's begin to understand this is the nucleus and this is the endothelial cell let's first is the prostacycline cyclic amp pathway prostacycline mean in this way the archidonic acid metabolism archidonic acid will be moved into the endothelial cell and archidonic acid in the present uh, presence of cyclooxygenase enzyme will convert the uh, PGH2 so this PGH2 is basically converted by the PGI synthase enzyme to produce PGI2 and this PGI2 which that will be moved toward the smooth muscle cell and after this 
मूव टू वर्ड द स्मूथ मसल सेल दैट विल बी एक्टिवेट द स्मूथ मसल सेल फॉर द वैजो डायलेशन नॉट वैजो कंस्ट्रक्शन बट वैजो डायलेशन इन दिस वे द सिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम विल बी इनहिबिट वाइल द पैरा सिंपथेटिक नर्वस सिस्टम विल बी एक्टिवेट इट कैन बी आर्चिडोनिक एसिड विल बी रिलीज रिलीज फ्राम द नर्व एंडिंग और सर्कुलेटिंग इन टू द ब्लड वैसल सो द नर्व एंडिंग इज इम्पॉर्टेंट सो हेयर इज यू कैन सी दियर इज द पी जी आई टू विल बी पॉइंट विद द इंट्रा सेलुलर एक्स्ट्रा सेलुलर सेप्टर टू स्टिमुलेट द इंट्रा सेलुलर डोमेन ऑफ ट्राइमेरिक प्रोटीन विच दैट विल बी एक्टिवेट द एल्फा जी डी पी टू एल्फा जी टी पी एक्टिवेशन ऑफ दिस एडिनाइलेट साइकिल एनजाम यूज दैट इज द प्रोड्यूस सेकेंड मैसेंजर साइकिल के एम पी द साइकिल के एम पी आई ऑल्सो कन्वर्ट इन टू द पी डी थ्री फोर ए एम पी इन दिस वे द वैजो डायलेशन विल नॉट अकर इफ द साइकिल के एम पी विल बी नॉट प्रोड्यूस एंड कन्वर्ट बाई आ पी डी ई थ्री फोर बट इन दिस वे द इनहिबिटर द पी डी ई थ्री फोर इनहिबिटर कैन बी इनहिबिट and in this way the inhibition will stimulate the vasodilation and proliferation anyhow here is important thing you should need to understand lats is the nitric oxide cyclic gmp pathway the cyclic gmp pathway in this way the l arginine will be metabolized inside of the endothelial cell and after this the nitric oxide synthase enzyme used to produce l arginine conversion into the nitric oxide and in this way the n l arginine convert into the nitric oxide or so the nitric oxide dependent vasodilators in this way also bind with the no dependent receptor and in this way here you can see this will be stimulate the calcium in efflux into the cytoplasmic calcium will be increase will stimulate the nitric oxide synthase activity on the other hand the ip3 which that will be also trigger the Uh, endoplasmic reticulum to efflux of the calcium and after this calcium will be increased so the vaso uh, in this way that uh, uh, also the uh, uh, stimulate the nitric oxide not vasoconstriction here but in this way because endothelial cell not require vasoconstriction but the vasoconstriction due to the smooth muscle cell so this is the smooth muscle cell when the nitric oxide go into the smooth muscle cell and guanyl guanyl cyclase enzyme used to produce gtp convert into the cyclic gmp increase this cyclic gmp will be pds pdes inhibitor which can be inhibit the gmp and cyclic gmp to gmp so in this way the cyclic gmp will stimulate the relaxation and vasodilation again and hormonal secretion but the cyclic gmp also inhibit the pde3 uh, 4 it is a cross talking of the cell in this way the cyclic gmp when the pde3 4 will be activate in this way the inhibition will stimulate the vasodilation otherwise vasoconstriction so on the other hand here is the heart will also produce the nitrotic peptides this nitrotic peptides is basically nitrotic peptide nitrotic pep peptides which that will be move into the smooth muscle cell it can be a uh, a nitrotic peptide or b nitrotic pep peptide a and b uh, a and p and b and p which that is will stimulate with the receptor binding with the receptor will also stimulate the guanyl cyclase also bind the other cells here you can see this will decrease the blood pressure and reabsorption of water and sodium from the glomerular filtration will be uh, increase so the reabsorption not sorry reabsorption will be decrease will lead to decrease the blood pressure and in this way the blood pressure will be decreased due to the vas this way the vasodilation will also input of the heart will be increased and and here is endothelial pathway this endothelial pathway is basically the pro endothelin are present which that pro endothelin is the protein and endothelin b receptor are also present endothelin uh, converting uh, enzyme Uh, endothelin converting enzyme basically uh, stimulate the 
conversion of endo pro endothelin to endothelin 1 and in this way here you can see the endothelin receptor antagonists and th this will be inhibit the ETA uh, endothelin um, A and in this way you can see this is the endothelin will also stimulate uh, in this way here you can see this the endothelin receptor will stimulate the PI3K pathway in this way the IP2 will convert into the DAG and IP3 will stimulate the calcium in outflux and increase of the calcium will lead to uh, bind with the troponin for the vasoconstriction so the vasoconstriction will lead to increase the blood vessel uh, constriction to lead to uh, higher blood pressure and in this way the sympathetic nervous system activity but the adrenergic ner nerves also stimulate through epinephrine and norepinephrine for the vasoconstriction but remember this is the vasodilation and vasoconstriction mechanism thanks for watching please make sure to subscribe next video